This familiar toy is a passive dynamic walker with energy supplied by falling weight and the right start. It settles into a steady walking cycle sustained by an entirely passive interaction of gravity and inertia. This machine is also a passive dynamic walker. For that matter, I may be a passive dynamic walker. As you'll see, our gates are quite similar. Here I'll show you some tape of machines like this in action and hope to offer some insight into both human locomotion and possibilities for robot design. This is our first machine, which we built in 1988. You can call it a two-dimensional biped. That is, like a natural biped, it has two independent legs. But the feet are paired like crutches, and that balances the machine laterally. Like the toy, the machine is powered by gravity. In this case, not by a weight falling on a string, but instead by a downhill slope. You'll see clips of the machine walking on slopes from 1 to 3%. The steeper the slope, the faster the walk. In the first clip, the machine will walk on a checkerboard pattern of tiles. That's prevent this problem. Scuffing of the feet as they pass through mid-stride. But on the uh, following clips, you'll see the machine walking on a smooth tabletop with uh, an active electronic system working to fold the swing feet out of the way. We'll go through these clips quickly and then come back to this machine, which has knees. Here the slope is 1%. one and a half. Here the slope has increased to 2%. Okay. And now the slope is 3%. Now that you've seen what this machine does, it might strike you that some features are out of proportion. The grand problem of generating the gate is solved by just two straight legs, a pin joint, and a downhill slope. However, the relatively small problem of foot scuffing requires addition of this elaborate, complicated, electronic active mechanism. Naturally, it'd be nicer to have a passive solution. Well, Humans solve the foot scuffing problem with knee joints, so it was natural to ask, would knee jointed passive walking be possible? So let me introduce a machine that we call Dynamite, and also Dynamite Junior, which is a small version of the same idea. Like this machine, these are two-dimensional bipeds, again with paired legs to solve the lateral balance problem. But now, the machine has a knee joint and a mechanical stop. Now, as you can imagine, a machine with all these joints has lots of different ways to fall down. It can fall going forward, it can fall going backward, or it can just buckle. Now, despite having a lot of persuasive mathematics, it was difficult, at least for me, to grasp intuitively that a machine with all of those ways to fall down could possibly walk all by itself. Well, we take video of every experiment we do, and as a result, the camera is running the day when the analysis and my intuition were brought conclusively into line. Oh my God. <laughs> Those few steps convinced us that we had the dynamics right. The reason the machine failed was a problem called knee bounds. When the shank went to full extension towards the end of the stride, 
it didn't stay against the mechanical stop, but instead bounced back. On the last step, it uh, was still in a flex position when the foot hit the ground, and as a result, the leg just buckled. Now, there were dampers installed at the knee joints in order to prevent that problem, but they turned out not to be good enough. So for later experiments, we went to a set of mechanical catches, and the next sequence shows our first trial with those. Here we are on the date indicated. And the slope is 4.5%. The new twist today is that we have installed four debouncers, one on each leg. So this is our first trial to see whether that's going to work. Ready to pan? Yeah. Oh, yes. Those debouncers did work for a while, but they also wore out. So after a few days, we went to a different system. The uh, present machine uses a suction cup and a carefully sized lead for the debouncing. So that's what you'll see working on these next few clips. What we'll show is a variation in walking speed with slope. Now you'll remember with the straight-legged machine, we started at 1% and went up to 3%. Now, in the clips that are coming up, the machine starts on a 3.5% slope, and that isn't even enough. Actually, the range in which you get good walking is from 4 to 6%. So now let's show those. The gates of these two machines might look quite different. In fact, the dynamics are very similar. In fact, I can demonstrate that by locking the knees of this machine and going back to straight-legged walking, again on a checkerboard pattern of tiles. Now, foot placement makes a big difference. You'll notice on this machine, the feet are symmetric about the leg. But on this one, the feet are displaced forward like in a human. Now I'll show two clips, one in which uh, the feet are symmetric, the second in which they're in the same position as for knee-jointed walking. I think the second of those will look quite familiar. We call it passive dynamic goose-stepping. Incidentally, in the first of those experiments, you might have noticed that the start was done automatically. Well, that automatic launcher was great when it worked, but reliability was a problem, so we came to prefer manual starting. And the official launchers were Ken Long Jang for the straight-legged machine, and Keith Antonelli and I doing most of the stuff with dynamite. Well, now you've seen a lot of downhill walking, and that raises the obvious question, well, what about going uphill? This machine should provide us with the answer. We're building it now. We hope to have it ready by the end of 1990. Its dynamics are essentially the same as in our original straight-legged machine. But now each of the legs has a spring-loaded foot. The idea will be to wind up the spring during the stance phase and then release it just as the foot leaves the ground. This will provide a push, which is quite analogous to plantar flexion in a human. The more energy you store in the spring, the faster you go, or the steeper you climb. The machine will also have a torso. That's a convenient place for storing equipment, but it also presents a new problem. 
The torso is essentially an inverted pendulum, and it has to be stabilized on top of the hips. That's done by applying a torque between the torso and the stance leg, and it's quite straightforward to devise an appropriate control law. The problem is actuation. You need an actuator which can provide the necessary torque, but at the same time not compromise the leg's freedom to swing, which is absolutely essential for passive walking. Conventional actuators, a DC motor, say with gears, or a hydraulic cylinder or a pneumatic cylinder, would not work. They would introduce much too much inertia or friction or damping of some kind. Instead, we needed a new type of actuator, and that's called live. This is what live means. Two elastic tendons are stretched down either side of the leg and connected around a pulley at the bottom. At the top, they're connected to a crank. The idea here is to keep the tension on either side the same and essentially independent of angle. Now, if the crank is symmetric around the joint, then this arrangement produces no net torque. But if the crank is displaced, then you get a torque which is proportional to the asymmetry. The key point is that that torque is independent of angle, so you have all the freedom that you need for passive walking. The next sequence will demonstrate. First, you'll see a leg swinging freely without the tendons attached. Then, we'll put the tendons on and again do a swinging experiment, and you'll see that the stiffness and damping of the motion are only slightly increased. Then we'll use the same actuator to stabilize the leg in an inverted position. Now, for the first experiment, the tendons are off, and we're just going to do a pendulum swing uh, with the leg itself to uh, measure the frequency and damping. So, lift it to one side, hit the computer, go. Is done and cut. Right, now the tendons are on. They're stretched to about 50 newtons each side. So that if we move the crank over this way, the leg is pulled that way, and if we move the crank the other way, the leg is pulled this way, and uh, if we put it back in the middle, we do a pendulum. So now I'll hold it in the middle, push the leg to one side, start the computer. And finished. Cut. We can move the leg to the inverted position and we will demonstrate control. Hit it, Dwayne. is bouncing itself inverted. Good. Cut. The study of passive walking leads naturally to the question, what about passive running? We knew that if a passive running model were to be possible, elastic storage would be important. This point has been emphasized, especially by Neil Alexander, Tom McMahon, and Mark Rayburn. So we put some elasticity into the straight-legged walking model. Telescoping springs were put into the feet, and a torsional spring was put around the hip. Otherwise, we have rigid legs, circular feet, just as in the straight-legged walking model. It turns out that this arrangement does indeed have a passive running mode, and we'll end the tape with some animation. Tom McMahon and Mark Rayburn. So we put some elasticity into the straight-legged walking model on the hip. Otherwise, we have rigid legs, 
circular feet just as in the straight leg. Indeed, have a passive running mode, and we'll end the tape with some animation.